Recapitulation Theory of Embryological Development is the title of this chapter. And the phrase that we're using is ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Ontogeny, what does that mean? That means the biological development of the individual. Recapitulates means repeats briefly phylogeny, which is the evolutionary development of the individual. This theory speculates that the human embryo, when it develops in the womb, it passes through the evolutionary stages that were encountered in the evolution of man. In other words, you start out as a prozoan, and then you evolve into a worm, and then you evolve into a fish, and then you evolve into a amphibian, to a mammal, and finally a human. In other words, you repeat the evolutionary process in the womb. For over a hundred years, evolutionists used this as one of their main, quote, proofs of evolution. They had so-called evidence that the human embryo has a certain stage, that that produced evidence that a man once had amphibious ancestors. Now, the truth of the matter is, is that the embryo has to develop. And those folds of tissues that they call gills aren't gills at all, but they finally develop into the tongue, the lower jaw, and the neck, and so forth. I do not have all the details on this, but this is a picture here of what Ernest Haeckel used as drawings to prove. And what he did was he had some drawings made of embryos. And this, for example, is the so-called embryo of the fish. This is the salamander, tortoise, chicken, hog, calf, rabbit, man. And he was trying to show that what you're doing, as you can see, is you're repeating the evolutionary history. And that was the so-called evidence. But his drawings had been intentionally changed to make them fit the theory. And the actual embryos themselves are different from the diagrams. He later admitted that some of these drawings were intentionally changed to make them fit his theory. Now, if a person actually looked at the embryo rather than the drawings, they'd do a whole lot different. And there was one person who actually did that. These are what the actual embryos of those things look like. It doesn't look at all like that series of drawings. So what he did was he forged those drawings in order to try to prove his theory. You'd come to a conclusion a whole lot differently if you actually looked at the embryos rather than his drawing. Now let's get some other evidence that falsifies the recapitulation theory. If you check on the DNA of the various things, like a fish and salamander and turtle and chicken, you'd find that the DNA is quite different. Also, you find out that the DNA of the embryo is the same as the grown. The Bible would indicate that. It's 1535, but Paul says all flesh is not the same flesh. There's one kind of flesh of men, another of beasts, another of fish another bird. So the idea that one time we were fish in the mother's womb is not so because flesh is not the same for fish. And of course the DNA for fish is not the same. Embryological studies have shown that there are many omissions, additions, inversions compared to the few parallels of the supposed evolutionary sequence. So the evidence in no way supports an actual recapitulation or an actual repeat of evolutionary history. Now, I'm hoping I can read this to you, but this is a little article that I have in Parade Magazine. This was about 1992, in the August article. Parade Magazine asked the readers, who are the smartest people in America? The number one vote-getter of the smartest person in America at that time was a fellow named Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan has since passed away, but he wrote a lot of books. He was an ardent evolutionist. He's the so-called smartest man in America. He was a pro-choice fellow. He co-authored an article in which he advocated that the embryo developed in the mother's womb is not a real human until perhaps the sixth month of development. He used this old discredited idea of embryonic recapitulation. 
Heckel, however, doctored his illustration, and as the author of this article says, Heckel was a rogue. Heckel doctored his illustrations outrageously to support his biogenic law. Heckel's forgeries and deception, he even admitted that he had falsified the drawings. But here's many years later, almost 100 years later, Parade Magazine quoting Sagan saying things like this, by the third week it looks a little like a segmented worm. By the end of the fourth week it is recognizable as a vertebrae. Its tube-shaded heart is beginning to beat, something like the gill arches of a fish or an amphibian have become conspicuous and there is pronounced tail. It looks like a tadpole. By the sixth week, the eyes are still on the side of the head, as in most animals, and the reptilian face has connected slits where the mouth and nose eventually will be. By the end of the eighth week, the face resembles a primate's, but is still not quite human. So this fellow, Sagan, who is supposed to be the smartest person, clearly uses a discredited recapitulation theory to justify abortion. The medical world has shown that this is a false theory. Jan Langman, the author of Medical Embryology, said, it can no longer be said the human embryo ever has gills. Also, a biology publication in Australia says, it was once thought the embryo's development, which is ontogeny, repeats the stages of evolutionary changes. We now realize this is not so. Now, why do people listen to Sagan? Sagan seems to have answers to all the questions. We need to have answers. And the Bible tells us, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear. And I'm hoping this class will be able to give you some answers. Here's the real point why that theory is so dangerous. It's been used as a justification for abortion. If the fetus is really not a human till the sixth month, then what harm is done if it's aborted? And now they're even doing late-term abortions. But even early, I don't know about you, but I do not suffer real remorse on a rainy day if I happen to step on a worm by mistake and kill it. I'm not a fisherman, but I've never had any qualms of conscience if I catch a fish and kill it, eat it. So here's the thing. If, say, at a few weeks, the lady finds out she's pregnant, and all that's in there is a worm, well, what's wrong with aborting it? Or, if you were later, if it's a fish, what's wrong with killing a fish? That's the justification. This discredited theory is a pseudoscientific, still used apparently by abortionists, say, well, it's no harm, just, just abort the baby. It's not really a baby yet anyways. That's not so. From conception, from the, when the sperm and the egg unite from conception, that DNA is fully human. So that's one of the bad fruits of an evolutionary theory. Some other devastating effects of evolution. Suicide. Suicide rate is the second leading cause of death among teenagers in the United States. They commit suicide because they have a low self-esteem. They don't realize their value. They can't answer basic questions. Where do they come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? I had the privilege of hearing Dr. Michael Girard. He's from New Orleans. He left a lucrative medical practice. He said one of the things that caused him to speak on creation was that he had a young man in his medical practice. He came to him and he said, Doc, he said, I'm made in the image of an ape who was made in the image of bacteria, who was made in the image of Big Bang, that was made in the image of nothing. And he continued. He said he came from nowhere, he was nothing, he was going no place, therefore he saw no reason to live. And then he asked the doc, what do you do with an empty can of Vienna sausage? He says, you throw it away. And that's what the young man did. He just committed suicide. And he apparently he had several teenagers under his practice commit suicide. And so that was one of the reasons why he was seeking to show people the value of life. But you see, if, if they get the idea they're just a product of time and chance, they're just an animal, you know, what harm is it taking your life? Well, that's one of the fruits of evolution. Now, I want to say your value is not based on your appearance or your talents. Your value is that you're a created human being, that God has a place and a work for you. I believe that. And really, what is beauty? You know, we got the idea that beauty is some model or something like that. I heard a young lady not too long ago talk about another lady, how ugly she was. Well, in the eyes of God, 
Who is ugly? No, you're ugly. You're beautiful in God's eyes. Isn't that right? You have value. You have purpose. You're not junk. And I want to just say before I move on that I believe God has a purpose for you. Every individual in this class, God has a purpose for you. There is a purpose. Don't ever feel like you're a worthless evolutionary product of junk. Communism. Karl Marx, who is one of the founders of communism, dedicated his book, or wanted to dedicate his book, Das Kapital, to Darwin. And many socialists and communists frequently refer to Darwinian ideas such as class struggle. I mentioned this earlier in the class that Darwin's subtitle of his book was The Preservation of Favored Races. He was a racist. Nazism is a fruit of it. Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, you know what that means? My struggle. And this is the struggle, the survival of the fittest type thing. He was heavily influenced by Darwinian theory. And I'll be talking about that more when we get to chapter 28. Hitler thought that the white man was supreme. Hitler actually blamed the Jews for bringing Negroes into Germany. He just felt like the Negro was lower on the totem pole. So him, he thought that the white race was supreme and that the other races, of course, he murdered, what was it, six million Jews, something like that? And then I mentioned also destruction of faith. Probably more people have lost their faith due to the teaching of evolution than any other false doctrine. And we'll talk about that more later. And then there's gross immorality. We are living in a wicked generation. I don't know of anyone when I was in high school that would have admitted to being a, a homosexual. But now they have 100,000 people at a time march with gay pride celebration. That was a shame. And the Bible is. It's an abomination. It's sodomy. There's nothing right about it whatsoever. But if you're an animal, you can live like an animal. That's what they're teaching. That's one of the fruits of this. So with evolution, every man does that which is right in his own eyes. If you're just a product of time and chance, then there's no reason for treating men and women as objects of dignity and respect because they are no different from the animals from which they supposedly have evolved. Evolutionists have no rules against fornication, adultery, homosexuality. No wonder sexually transmitted diseases are so rampant. 